Welcome to r r Relationships in Real Estate. I'm your host, Chris Silva, and this is my lovely wife, Corey Silva. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Chris and I are the owners of Silva Realty and Silva Lending, and we have been in the mortgage and real estate industry since the early 2000s, and we absolutely love what we do. Super excited to have you guys back. Um, please make sure that you interact with us, leave us some comments. It's the third week of January, and we have a great show planned for you all today. How was your week? Be sure to leave us some comments and let us know. And if you tuned in last week, we have some fun stuff to catch up on. And if you're new to watching our show, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. So last week, uh, we had something really dramatic happen in the news. And I don't feel like enough people talked about it or saw it. Um, so we wanted to share it with you today. It's It was one of our local heroes who actually also happens to be one of our clients. He's a police officer and a veteran. So thank you so much for your service, Robert Chirac. We wanted to share this video with you if you haven't seen it. So um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what happened? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if anybody saw this, but uh, a, pi a plane crashed on the railroad tracks. Oh, my gosh. Right. So that's scary all by itself. Right. So this guy somehow pulls off that landing, lives, but now the train's coming. Oh, my Lord. So why don't we go ahead and watch the video, and then we could talk about it. All right. That sounds great. So I believe this footage is from the body cam of Robert Sherrod. Okay. I believe. All right. It's going to be starting any minute now. So now you have four officers, all there. Look at this. They rescued this pilot. There's like two seconds, three. That and is insane. Wow. Here's a different angle. It looks like somebody took this from the... Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, so, how scary. How many people out there can truly say that you see a train coming seconds away and you that jump you're into risk, action? You like jump that. into action and risk your own life wow. to, to save this person, right? A right. complete stranger. When you have a family to go home to. Yes. You know, I, I just want to touch on that because I, I don't think that uh, law enforcement police officers get enough credit, right? Right. We see a lot of negative stories coming out. And then something like this that hardly even moved the needle on local news mm -hmm. deserves national attention. Absolutely. Wow. He really jumped. He and his colleagues definitely jumped into action. So thank you so much for all you do, um, for being great servants to our community, ser providing a great service to our community and helping us when we need them. And it, it, I can't wait to have uh, a you know dinner or lunch again with... Um, Robert's dad, Bob, right, mm -hmm. and, and his and his mom, Paula, because he already can't stop talking about his son. I know. They're so proud he's of this. He's so son. proud of everything he's ever done, right, that, oh, my gosh, when we talk to him about this, it's going to be over the moon. Yes. Right? Wow. That was pretty amazing. That was amazing. So how many people out there, would you guys have risked your life knowing that it trains three seconds down the road? Hey, I'd gonna, love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. Leave us some comments. And it looks like we have Betsy has joined us. Hi, Betsy. Thanks for joining us today. Um, some other news. So are there any football fans out there? <laughs> I feel like all the football fans have come out of the woodworks now that it's getting closer to the end, right? So what about your Raiders? You're a huge Raider fan. What happened? I think I'm one of the biggest Raider fans. So <laughs> the Raiders lost. I mean... Oh. I, mean, I didn't have any dreams that they were going to win the Super Bowl. I was just so happy to see them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to see Derek Carr in the playoffs. So for people that don't know the Raiders, Derek Carr has been our quarterback for like 13 seasons. Never been in the playoffs. The one year, 2016, where he was going to win the MVP, meaning the best player in the league, he breaks his foot the, day, the last game of the season. Oh, no. Raiders finally make it to the playoffs, had a drought of like 15 years at the time. And we have a backup quarterback that's never even played much in a game, right? So we, we got beat pretty handedly. And at least this game against the Bengals, I thought we had a shot. 
all I wanted as a fan is I want to be entertained from when the from kickoff to the end of the game. And I was. So if anybody watched the game, it came down to literally the last play of the game. The Raiders were trying to get in the end zone. And I think they were like 15 yards out, 20 yards out. And if they would have tied it, they would have made it. Uh, if they would have scored a touchdown, they would have tied the game and went into overtime. And for anybody that's been watching the Raiders this year, they've been in overtime five times. I was going to say, it seems like they're always in overtime. They've won every single game in overtime. Oh, just not this one. So I was I like, counted. let's. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. So, <laughs> so Santino was so excited. He actually watched a little bit of the game with me. He just wanted to be by me. He mm -hmm. no interest in the Raiders. No, no interest in football. He right? is not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> so he asked me the other day. He goes, "Hey, Dad. Um, when's the last time the Raiders were in the Super Bowl?" And I said, "About twenty years ago." And and what do you say after that? He goes, "Well, it looks like you're going to be waiting another twenty years, Dad." <laughs> The worst part about it is he might not be wrong. Uh, <laughs> so anybody following the team, look, I'm a big fantasy football guy, and that's only because the Raiders stink every year. So my football season ends like in week 12, week 13, when the Raiders are like eliminated from the playoffs. And there's 16, 17 games in a season. Mm -hmm. So as, you know, all these bandwagon fans that like love these playoff teams, like now I see Kansas City fans everywhere, which I've never seen before they won the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Um, all these bandwagon fans, they get to enjoy the playoffs where I don't. So I'm already looking at the draft mm -hmm. of like who the Raiders are going to draft. I'm looking at what practice squad players did they re-sign for the following season? What are they doing in management? So like this year, it's really interesting. They already fired the general manager, Mike Mayock. Wow, they don't waste no time. Didn't waste no time. He's only been there three years and he was kind of attached to John Gruden. Mm -hmm. He made. There's been a lot of blunders. We had two people from a first first round draft picks from last year and the year before last. One murdered somebody Aye. in a DUI. He guy was driving 140 miles per hour. That's crazy. Disgusting, yeah. right? Idiot. And he was a key part of our offense, which I'll, that's football talk. But he was a wide receiver one, and he was a speed guy that opened up the offense for everybody. And then the other guy, this guy Damon Arnett, literally two weeks after. We had this happen with Henry Ruggs, who kills somebody. Damon Arnett's on camera, oh boy, brandishing a gun, threatening to kill whoever's shooting the video. Oh my god! So they cut him too. So the reason this all is relevant is because Mike Mayock. Sorry, but you can't draft these kind of players. Aye, aye, aye. You have to evaluate more than just the the athlete, right? You got to mind and all that stuff and figure it out. So Mike Mayock's gone. We're looking for a general manager. We might get a new coach. Exciting times. That's what I look forward to at the Raiders instead of the playoffs. I'm looking at coaches Well, I'm and hoping they make GMs. way better decisions this next year. And I'm just happy that you get to stay home with me and you don't get to go to Tennessee. Sorry, Rob. He's not <laughs> going to be able to come see you. But he is planning a trip coming up. So Chris gets to stay home with yeah, us. Yeah. And for Raider fans, what do we always say? We'll get him next year. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you say that. Who, who branded that? Who coined that phrase? Uh, all the terrible teams in the league. <laughs> well, it works It waiting. works for every sport, but oh, as a Raider fan, goodness. it works. Oh, I'm There's sorry. always next year. There's always next year. Just keep waiting. <laughs> Say that up for the next 20 years. So also last week, Chris went golfing, and that was a huge success. How Are you a pro golfer now? I am not a pro golfer, but it was a huge <laughs> success because... I didn't get injured, right? Right. A friend of ours is telling me, oh, yeah, well, he's going to throw out his back or he's going to strain a muscle or mm -hmm. whatnot. So instead of focusing on trying to get the ball in the hole, I was just trying not to get hurt. Yeah, well, he didn't get hurt, <laughs> thank goodness. And he's considering starting a weekly tradition now. So if anybody's interested in playing golf with Chris, I know a few of you have reached out to him. Please reach out because he's going to be going tomorrow, right? Thursday? So tentatively, I'm set up for tomorrow at 7 a.m., which I find to be a really good t day and time for me. Mm -hmm. And I love it because by 7, if you're, if you're doing nine holes, I think is what it's called. So you're doing nine <laughs> holes, uh, you're done by like 8.30, Oh, that's good. So I still have my whole day to be productive, right? So yes. it's, it's it's nice. So if anybody wants to golf with me, which I've had a couple people reach out already, let's start setting them up for Thursdays at 7. That sounds good. Yeah, he'll be out there on the course. So we also just went to California Adventure. 
So how, what did you think about our trip? We stayed over at the Grand Californian for our first time at Disneyland. So what we did is we went down um, halfway through the day on Sunday, and then we checked into the hotel, got situated. What did you think about our experience there? Well, I'm going to tell you about it, but right before we do, we actually have a comment from Janice. Do you, oh, you want to read that? Awesome. Hi, Janice. Very cute interview. Very funny. I wish our Raiders could do a little more cross your fingers. So I miss Janice. Janice is retired. I used to see her all the time at the Ralphs. Uh -huh. And then she retired last year. So I don't, every single time I saw her, I got to talk to her. We talk sports, we talk whatever. But mm -hmm. I miss you, Janice. I hope you're doing well. Oh, yes. We'll yes, get them we next year with you. the Raiders. It's, it's really hard to come by like familiar faces at the grocery store anymore. So thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate that. They got a new wave of young kids in there. I know. And then it's just a, bit, a lot of turnover, a lot, a lot of changes. Of turnover. But getting back to the, the Grand Californian, mm -hmm. uh, I was excited to stay there because we've done the, the, was it the Disney Pier? Uh, Pier Par Paradise? Paradise Pier. Paradise Pier. We've done the Disney Hotel. Yes. And then we have our, our favorite across the street. I can't remember what the name of it is. That has it, a huge slide. It's the Courtyard Marriott. It's really nice. That's fun. Like for the summertime, it's a good time. Yes. But the Grand Californian, I was so excited to be there because you can get into the park early. It's right there. Yes. And it just, the biggest thing is I was happy not to have to walk as much to get to the car. Yeah. It's so convenient. Hotel. It's right there. You literally just walk down and you check in. You don't have to go in through the main gates. So that was really nice. I loved the convenience of it. But hearing from other people who have stayed there pre-COVID, there used to be a lot of cool perks there that they no longer have, which like I was what? a little bit sad about. Well, Monica was telling me there's this area that the kids could sit in front of a fireplace with a movie and rocking chairs. I didn't see that anywhere. I saw the rocking chairs. That they was probably... for adults, though. Ah. She said there's a separate one for kids. Okay. And I think the biggest thing that I missed were the characters that walk around and inter interact with the kids while you're checking in. Yeah, you, they have to do something to justify that price, right? Mm -hmm. So the characters is a big plus because at the Disneyland Hotel, we had Goofy. Mm -hmm. The kids got to run up there, take pictures with them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we were missing that at, at, on this one. Right. And I get it. They have different protocols they have to follow with COVID. So that's why they've pulled back on a lot of character interactions. But I have a little bit of a gripe to pick because, you know, we... I wanted to make it fun for the kids since we can't really get that close to the characters when we go. So I splurged a little and oh paid for the dining with the characters at the Storyteller's tell Cafe. And when we got there, you know, we're so excited. Like I, I booked it really early, which Nola is not a big fan about waking up Wait, early. I'm not going to lie. When you told me the time, <laughs> I was like, there's no way we're going to make it on time. I just know myself and the kids. Like we all like to kind of ease our way into the morning. Right, so you said seven, seven o'clock? I told him seven o'clock because I knew he'd be running behind. And in his head, he thinks like, oh, we're not going to get there. So then he just like lollygags. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, you got to remember, we did Disneyland the day before. So we're tired, yes. right? We stayed up late. Mm -hmm. There's no way in heck we're making it at seven o'clock. No, we are making it because you, if you don't show up for a reservation, they are going to charge you. So we are going, okay? I'm going to get my money's worth. So I was like the drill drill sergeant that sure. morning. I'm like, everybody, you need to be ready. We're going. He's like, I thought we had to be there at 7.30. I'm like, I told you 7. It's 7.10. Let's go. So we got down there at 7.15. And it's cool. The kids are very excited because they could see the characters from the outside, right. right? So we get in there. We get sat down. And they, you know, they tell you, go ahead and get your food. The characters are going to come every 20 minutes. And so I'm over there getting the kids' food. It's buffet style. And I'm thinking, oh, they're going to serve you because of all these code, COVID, COVID protocols, right? you had to grab the utensils like everybody else, like straight up buffet style. And that kind of like creeped me out. I saw a kid, <laughs> oh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't food that I was gonna eat and food that we're, none of us were gonna eat anyway, but grab like a croissant or something, Don't right? Don't tell me he put it back. And, and then put it back. No. And then the dad's like, no, you know, you got to get that. But who knows how many more th that kid touched or any other kids oh, touched gosh. before. I'm so glad you didn't tell me while I was there. Luckily, it slipped my mind at the time. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. And they, they have signs that say, you know, use the ten utensils to grab stuff. But, you know, there's still nasty cochinos who don't clean their hands before they go to or grab Or after food. the bathroom, they don't wash their hands. I still saw that oh, there. Oh, gosh. And they have like a sanitizing station before you go up there. But I didn't see anybody sanitize their hands before they grabbed a plate. I did. But still. Right, so how does it make sense? Disney. 
If you're out there listening, how does it make sense that you could serve food buffet style where people are putting their hands all over the utensils, touching food and putting it back, and we're taking this to our table, we're, we're eating about it, to we're eat consuming it. it, right? But we can't take a picture with the character. Right? It doesn't make any sense. Can't you have your, your people wear the mask underneath the, the, the N95, underneath the, the <laughs> well, suit? I'm not asking for all of that. I'm just saying so if like, it makes them feel better. Why I can't we take know. pictures with the character, but we could we could eat this, you know, slop with our hands? A slop. That's what you felt like it was, That too. food was no good. That, that's the other thing. Chris is like, this food is so salty. And honestly, like, when you're there, you just pay for whatever you need to get to get through the day, right? And you want to eat early to have some fuel to get going. So I'm not going to sit there and complain about it. I'm just going to enjoy it, keep a little bit of the magic going, because, you know, you don't want the kids to get upset. So anyways... We ended up, you didn't really, you weren't fond of the breakfast with the characters, right? It was okay. I liked that the characters came around, but they come around like every 20 minutes and the kids get a wave at them and that's it. Yeah, that's it. That was it. So like. But our kids were so excited. They were, because they're good kids. They just get excited about everything. I know. I think it was worth it because of the magic, but those, are, I probably won't do it again. <laughs> but some of the perks to that place, right after we get out of there, you actually get to enter the park and you get in at the Grizzly Run yes. in California Adventure. And I've never, we've never opened a park. Yes, we got there right at nine. So for those of you who are considering staying, they don't have the magic hour anymore. So you don't get in an hour before the general public. Everything opens at the same time. So we're there at nine. There was like no crowd where we were waiting to get in. There's five families in there front like of us. There's like five families. So we got in line like at 8.55 and we got in at 9. Yes. Which was awesome because I can't imagine the general entry probably has a long, long line. Well, to people get like in. camp out way before it even right. opens. So, we, so we, you know, it was nice. We got on Radiator Springs. It took us about 45 minutes, even though we were the, like some of the first people there. Yes, but it was so fun. And it was sprinkling that day. So I was thinking, oh, maybe some of the rain will deter people. And it doesn't deter people in Disney. So, and another perk is while we're at Disney, right, we got to take a break. Yes. And then come back to the hotel because the sun was still out. We're like, hey, kids, you guys want to go swimming? It was cold, but we did it. Yes. So I was like, we're getting our money's worth from this place, right? Yes, we are going to use that pool. Yeah, so it, it was nice. We went swimming. And that's what I really loved about the Grand Californian is the convenience factor. Yes, because it's, it's right there. And you don't have to worry about going so far to either get back to the other hotel or to your car to pick something up. And then Chris even got it relaxed in the jacuzzi. I think that's why, uh, you know, I didn't break down because I, you know, I got in the pool, got in the jacuzzi. We took a shower, like the, all the stuff that you don't do and then go back to the park when we stay somewhere else. Right. So I think it was worth staying there. What do you think? I, I'm going to say yes, but I don't know what it costs. So <laughs> I just I got rather a good not deal. know. I got a good I deal. I believe you. I trust you. <laughs> so last week was one of Chris's most active physical weeks. And we're very happy to report that he made it through two full days at Disney, uh, actually like a half a day at California Adventure, closed down the park, and the next day a whole full day from start to finish and closed it down. First time we did, we opened the park and closed the park. We've never done that before. Yeah, and he didn't need a mobility scooter. It wasn't even a thought in his mind like it usually is. So thank you to that jacuzzi. I think the jacuzzi did it. Yes. So who knows? Maybe we'll start staying there. I, I think that's what he's saying is now it's a requirement to stay at the Grand well, California. Well, I'll just subtract. I'll find out what the mobility scooter cost, and then I'll subtract that from the hotel price, and I'll say, ah, is, is $400 worth it a night? I like the way that he is justifying the next hotel stay. That's got, totally something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the physical activities that Chris has really been increasing on is his nights at jujitsu at Checkmat. So he absolutely loves going there, but do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So I'm usually a, a morning guy, and it's because I want to be with you and the kids at night, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I had to sacrifice going to my favorite class, which is today. Mm -hmm. It's Wednesdays, right? Um, because we have the podcast, mm -hmm. and we have something before the podcast uh, for real estate, which we'll talk about later. So I thought, hey, I'm, I'm in decent shape. I'm going to jujitsu twice a week. So last week I went four times, mm -hmm. right? To, and there was only two night classes, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, I didn't know that Thursday nights is competition class. Oh. So what does that mean? Yikes. That means there's a lot of people <laughs> in that class that are compete. They're getting ready to compete in a tournament. So the level of uh, toughness 
goes way up from what what I was used to in the morning. Right. But hey, I made it through two two days last week. I already did, uh, went last night, and I love it. And I think I'm gonna start going every single Tuesday and Thursday night because mm-hmm. it's it's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm so happy you have fun. And I and, got surprised. And to think, I used to tell you go have fun, and you'd get mad at me when I'd say go have fun. <laughs> and now he's saying I'm having fun. <laughs> well, because it's you know it, jujitsu is fun. But it also is very painful at the same time, right? So like, I get it. It's rewarding, though, right? It's rewarding. So we got uh, my brother Raf that just popped on. So Raf is a mentor of mine over in jiu-jitsu, purple belt, kicks my butt all the time. Hi, Raf. And Raf's a big reason, along with uh, a lot of my other um, classmates and professors there, I earned my second stripe last Friday. Congratulations. Thanks, which I'm I'm pretty proud of because that's blood, sweat, and tears. You know, mm-hmm. I cry by myself in the shower. <laughs> that when explains I get out. why you're there so long. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we'll make sure that we have the tissue box ready for Chris after his next class. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids also love checkmat. And I love checkmat, even though I don't fight there, but I'm there quite often with the kids. And Nola has this new thing where she loves to bring her babies to show off to Professor Lekka and Professor Art. So she collects these little Disney babies and she does like a whole introduction every single time she comes. And yesterday she had me bring four babies to that class. Oh, did you, did you have to bring four? I had to bring four. Luckily she didn't buy any more this last trip. And we told her she could get she whatever could she wanted. Remember, I, I said, we're going to spoil the kids this time. We're going to buy them whatever they want. And they both chose to get nothing. I love that. Awesome. So good. So good. So Danette has joined us. Hi, Danette. Next thing you know, Chris will be joining competitions. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Maybe. I, I told him when he starts getting those cauliflower ears, then I'm going to have to draw the line because I that, don't know about all that. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I used to tell Corey uh, before we had kids, I said, once your ankles get big, that's it. We're done. Oh, wow. And There's then, no turning back. Then I had big ankles when I was pregnant. <laughs> then you had big Santina. ankles, right? So she tells me it's payback, right? She's like, you start getting those cauliflower ears, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, which it's funny because I hope, hopefully they don't come, but I think they might. What? The cauliflower ears. Oh, they just cut. There's nothing I could do about it. Oh, please. Don't, can't you put some protective gear on or something? Yeah, I'll look they into it. They might laugh at you. Oh, I don't care about that. I'll, I'll look into <laughs> it. But um, yeah, so... Think I've actually thought a little bit only because I was in class last night and and we got um, Anissa there. She's she's one of the girls there that were, that is going to be competing, and she asked me if I was going to be competing. And I was like, Nah, I'm good. Not that I'm worried about it or anything. I just haven't thought about it, and it's a whole other level of dedication, right? Yes, for sure. It's not just going to training; it's dieting and fasting and doing all kinds of stuff, which I'm not ready to do yet. Mm-hmm. But um, who knows? Maybe one day. Well, Santino did his first competition a few years back. And let me tell you, when he first started, yeah, when he first started and I was a wreck, I was so scared for him. And it was like, these kids are like coming out there four and five and they have these mouth guards with like bloody (laughs) teeth. And I'm like, Oh, not my baby. I don't want him to be there. So, oh man, thank goodness Santino doesn't want to compete again. It's been a while when COVID kind of shut things down. He lost interest in the competitions, but he loves going to that class. And I I don't know, seeing you fight, that might get me a little nervous too. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) what I, so Santino hasn't really thought about competing since, Mm -hmm. and they really haven't been pushing it at the, at the, at checkmat because they're worried about the kids' safety. They they want some rules to protect the kids a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But so yesterday, so the way it works on Tuesday, Thursdays, Nola goes to class first, as soon as she gets out, Tino goes to class. Mm-hmm. And then now when Tino gets out, I go to class, right? So it's like boom, 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 boom. So when we when I got there last night, I think you went in the bathroom to the bathroom with Nola. Santino was so excited about him learning three more submission moves. Right. He's like, Dad, I learned the Americana and I learned how to do this. And I learned how to do that. He's like, can I try them on you when I get home? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, so baby. Cute. So after shower time, right before bedtime, you know, most parents are reading their kids a book. I'm laying on my back. I got I, my kids got me in mount, and he's uh, putting me in arm bars. And I'm not kidding you guys. This kid, seven years old, fifty pounds. I was like, all right. I had a tap, like almost broke my arm. <laughs> <laughs> he's strong. Oh my gosh. I'm like, easy kid. I'm your mom. Take it easy. So, anyways, yeah, he's really good at it, and we love that he goes there and is able to learn a lot of cool moves to defend himself. Right. 
Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, oh, I didn't know that. So Danette says that uh, her son Nick used to compete. Oh, how cool. Oh, my gosh. He's probably a beast. He's super long. I know. Like the the the, the taller kids, they got some advantages, you know, that um, that a lot of people don't have. So I bet you he was really good. Yes. I'm oh. going to have to talk to you more about that. Does Danette. he still train at jujitsu? I'm wondering? That would be cool to know. And then I, I'm also curious, did his jujitsu skills carry over to help him in football? Because I know he plays high school ball. Yeah, he's really good. He's got all these acceptance letters or interest letters coming from colleges. That's so. neat. Oh, that's awesome. So Nola's shopping adventures have continued. So for those of you who weren't here during our last show, we I took Nola on her first trip shopping. And um, where did you go? Well, we went to Old Navy and the selection was it was OK. But, you know, we were there for a few hours and she likes to four feel hours <laughs> and, and we went to Marshall's. So okay. <laughs> she was feeling material. And, you know, we, we left with only two pairs of jeans. And Chris was telling her the other Wait, day. Can you say that again? You were gone. How long? And would you come back with two pairs of jeggings for her? And how? And you were gone for four hours. This girl knows what she wants. <laughs> I like that she's not settling for less. Like I'm on a mission to find what I want, and I'm not going to settle for something that's not going to no, be comfortable or I'm cool with is that. not cute. I'm glad that you two can go together mm -hmm. and spend four hours to get two items, while me and Tina are at home watching the radio. And I have a lot of patience, so it's okay. I get it. She's a she's a good shopper, and she's my shopping partner for life, that's for sure. But Chris was telling her, you have to get some long sleeve shirts because you, we were purging her clothes the other day, and she's outgrown everything. Right. And what did she tell you? She goes, she goes, okay, Dad, but I am not going to Old Navy. They don't have anything there. <laughs> This girl, she's like, I cannot go to that store again. And I have to agree with her. Their selection was not that great. I mean, I think they had two different styles of shirts, but just different prints on them. And she was just come not on, old navy, it. old navy. <laughs> Got to get your game up. Get Five year old it. girls do not want to shop at your store. No, we're going to Target instead, and she's excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of the kids, the school pickup and drop off line has been. So convenient lately. I mean, we're rolling out of the house and I'm thinking we're going to be late and we get there with some time to spare. It's like really nice, but kind of sad at the same time with everybody being out sick. Has yeah. everybody else been experiencing that at drop off or pick up? I'm wondering because our schools, it's been really relaxed. Um, but I'm happy to say that one of our crossing guards is back today. So that Did was you talk it. to her? Was she sick? She, I asked, I already knew she was sick. I just said, are you feeling better? And she said, yeah. Okay. I mean, you have to assume that's what it was. Someone either had a flu, the cold or COVID nowadays. So it's been a uh, very interesting oh, look, at pickup. We got shopping tips from Danette. Oh, H&M has cute things for you. You would think that Old Navy would have cute things, especially being owned by Gap. Oh, I forgot about H&M. You're right. She'll probably go I need to go H &M. there. Thanks for the advice. Anybody else have some cool places to go shopping for little girls let me know because nola's very picky yeah she has three categories you guys of, of clothes this is how she categorizes them clothes that i'll wear at, only at my house <laughs> clothes that i'll wear only at disneyland and clothes that i get to wear at school or any or of or the other else, two right places, the yeah. clothes at school she'll wear anywhere but there's very far and few between that she'll wear there so Hopefully, H&M, we can get that third category oh, of clothes. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I'm going to go online today. The only thing is, is I like to shop online, and I think I have to start going in stores again for her. You're going to have to for Ugh. her. Oh, my. For sure. Oh, well. So last week, Chris specifically went to pick up Nola after the Raiders beat the Chargers, and um, he wanted to just be able to see her teacher because she's a big Chargers fan. She's a season ticket holder. And she talks a ton of trash and it's <laughs> Santino's same TK teacher. So I've been hearing from her for years, yes. right? All the trash talk. And um, she even sent home this one year with Santino, like a little cutout of herself with the picture of her face dressed in charger gear. It was when they were doing distance learning and she sent all the kids like a little like caricature of herself so they could feel like the teacher was in the classroom with her while... They're working online. Yeah, we had to fix that real quick and, and change that Raider gear, uh, that Charger gear into Raider gear. That yeah. was good job, mommy, setting that up. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, w I had all the intentions, the bad intentions to go in there and just trash talk her when I picked up Nola. Right. And then, you know what? I thought, I'm more mature than that. I'm just going to show up with my Raider gear because I wear it all the time anyway, you guys. Right. Like, I'm literally, 
I'm either in suits, in Raider gear, or like checkmate gear all the time. So I, I pick her up with the Raider gear, and she she gave me the hand, right? She's like, oh, I don't I don't even want to look at you, you know? And I'm like, hey, it was a good game. It was a great game. You got a good young quarterback there. There's always next season. Oh, wow. I had to throw that. Just that little dig, just a tiny dig. Yeah. But then fast forward to like this week, to today, right? When you went to go drop off Nola? Yesterday, I dropped her off after the, the extra long weekend. And she said, I'm so sorry for your husband's loss. Let him know I said that. And she had the evil cackle at the The evil end. cackle. So she would definitely be a villain if she was in anything. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Like the evil stepmom or something. Dang. I could see it. Well, you get a little evil too. Yeah. She, yeah anyhow. When it comes to your team. <laughs> a little bit. So we also had our family night this week, which we moved up um, to Friday. And we are continuing on our Scrabble journey. For those of you who um, have family nights or game nights, do you like to play Scrabble? We love to play Scrabble. And I was so excited because Chris's winning streak finally came to an end. That was four in a row. (laughs) These are with adults, people. Four, four wins in a row where I just destroyed you guys. Well, okay. It came to an end, though. Well, would you like a cookie to go along with that? Piece of pie. Piece <laughs> of pumpkin pie. Okay. <laughs> so his brother, Patrick, actually ended up beating him. So go, Patrick. Good job. I almost won, but Patrick beat me by two points at the very end because I had too many points in my rack. I was so annoyed. Yeah, Patrick was a big winner because we play. anybody play Phase 10 out there? I was, we were playing Phase 10, and then you guys were playing Scrabble. We were kind of doing both. I'd love to hear what games do you guys play on family nights? Like, what do you have a good time with? Maybe there's something out there that we haven't played that we would love. Oh, I know. We used to play Cards Against Humanity. We should bust well, that. Well, we thing. don't play that anymore because of the kids. <laughs> um, if we have an adult night, we could play that. But, like, this morning, I started my morning off playing Color Brain with Nola. Oh, she loves that game. So our kids are really competitive. They love to play games like that, Uno, all mm-hmm. that stuff. And Santino is now really getting into the Scrabble. So I, we'll probably have to get a kid's Scrabble. They have so we can a kid's play with Scrabble, them. so we're going to try that out. They're really excited to play that. So switching things up to real estate, we are still blown away by how this market has been going. Um, it seems like things really haven't changed much aside from the fact that there's still less and less inventory, right? Less and less inventory, and the rates are skyrocketing. And They're still super low. So let me just start over with that. The rates are still at all time lows. When I got into this business in 2005, I worked doing loans as a loan officer at Countrywide. The rates back then were six and a half percent. Okay, why is that relevant? Because the prices of homes were pretty on par with what they are today, Mm -hmm. right? I think we just now surpassed 2005 levels, Right. right? So the housing prices are relatively the same from 2005, 15, 16 years ago. But the rates back then were six and a half and people were still buying homes left and right. Right. Okay. I want that to register to people out there because today the rates shot up like half a percent in the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. So they went from 3% to now 3.625. Wow. Right. That is going to, it's going to move the needle a little bit on your payment, a couple hundred bucks, depending on where you're buying. But still, remember, 3.625, 6.5%. Prices of homes are the same. People, the prices are not coming down. House, The average house right now has five offers on it. Wow. The average listing, mm-hmm. five offers. Most people are offering the winning offers going 50 grand over asking price. Wow. Do you think they're flinching at this half a percent uh, no. increase on the rate? They're not. So... Either you want to buy a home or you don't want to buy a home, but Mm -hmm. you got to make that decision. Right, right, for sure. So um, it looks like we have a few comments. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt about the the market. But um, Danette, oh, first Betsy said H&M rocks, and then Danette said laugh out loud. And then Danette said there's a family edition now of Cards Against Humanity. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm going to have to check that out. You know, and then... I just thought about this. So my golfing partner for this last week, mm-hmm. Tony Price, he has a board, a, a game, a card game that he came out with. Oh, how cool! That's actually selling a lot of units. I think he moved like twenty five thousand units, which is a lot awesome. of units. And I think it's called um, a Black Frequently Asked Question, something mm-hmm. like that. I gotta ask him, but it's basically, um, you know. 
up to date genre like movies and stuff like that with African Americans, right? So like whether it be all trivia f for movies and that and oh, music how cool. and all that. We'll have to check that out. We'll have to check it out. But I know he's moving a ton of units, so maybe we'll try that out for one of these. Oh, that would be fun. Nights. So get switching gears back to real estate. One of our new buyers just got pre-qualified and is um, looking in Palmdale, right? Right. And she was interested in some of the new communities out there. And can you believe the new construction is sold out out there? And they're asking $700,000 for a home in Palmdale. For a new construction. We're talking like 300,000, uh, 3,000 square feet. Um, there's new there's new construction everywhere now, all right? So there's multiple new constructions in Santa Cruz that we'll touch on. Mm -hmm. Small little pockets of stuff. We're not talking about master communities like the like, you know, Castake right now mm -hmm. and 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 um five um uh, five point behind mm -hmm. Magic Mountain. There's also smaller pockets of little new communities going up. Like we have some in New Hall right off the 14 freeway. There's they're starting to build stuff at the end of Sand Canyon. Yes. Right? There's that whole um Via Canyon, the mm -hmm. KB interesting homes it's like kind of like pasadena ish uh -huh. the metrolink stops there the whole idea is that whole community uh you don't need a car you should right. be able to get to work without a car and live there it's moving a little slow the sales there because it's a little different lifestyle right especially with covid like i don't think a lot of people have adopted that back yet but the whole point is is there's new communities popping up everywhere mm -hmm. small pockets so if you're if you're out there looking for a home and you're sick of looking right, right we can possibly, I know all these different communities, get you pre-approved, get you on a list, and instead of over, you know, trying to overbid 50 grand on every, every listing out there, let's get you in line to get one of these new constructions. Absolutely, we can get you on those VIP lists that maybe you don't know exactly how to get there, and we'd love to help you navigate through those waters. It looks like Arvashi has joined us. Hi, Arvashi. Hi, Arvashi. Thank you for joining us. Um, a little bit of a tidbit from last week is we're still getting everybody added into the new resource that we have available that we've invested in for our clients. It's called HomeBot. And we are so appreciative for those who have reached out and wanted to be added. I'm still working on getting everyone in the system, but they are absolutely loving it. Natalie, I don't know if you're on right now because we could only see if you make comments, but if you are, she said she absolutely loves it. And th it, there's so many fun things that you could do on there to learn about how you can unlock the equity in your home, find out um, how much you could lower your payments by, and it all uh, is just at your fingertips. So you don't have to reach out to somebody and do all this legwork. It's really simple and easy to use, and I can't wait to share it with everybody because I know they're gonna love it as much as I do. It, it's, it's such a fun tool. You, you could just do all these what if scenarios mm -hmm. and people love to do that right because mm -hmm. everybody's always whether you're in the market for a home or not somehow you find yourself on zillow looking at homes right, right? or redfin so you can always call us everybody knows that we're no pressure types uh people you know so like you can always call us and we can walk you through it or if you just want to be set up on this home bot you get set up and you can do a lot of that stuff yourself and then contact us with any questions but we're going to be setting up all our people anyway yes it's it's, it's in motion. So you guys will all be getting set up on it pretty soon. For sure. For sure. We're super excited for it. And Urvashi said, cool. So definitely we'll get one out to you, Urvashi. So you could see like how well your investment is doing. So we're excited about that. We also met with a client who's super excited about the new community we were talking about last week called um, Williams Ranch in Castake. And we ourselves are super excited about it. They're very happy about it, and we're working on getting all the up-to-date information for you. There are so many cool things about that community, and I just today locked in a sneak peek preview where we're able to go there and see for our clients and get, you know, we could always get you registered now, but we're actually going to have um, a first sight before it actually comes out to the public, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah, Corey, Corey was able to book a, a trip for us and our agents, mm -hmm. so we're going to go check it out. We'll take some some you know behind the scenes uh, some footage or whatever and, and try to share that with you guys. I'm excited about it. I like the idea of being in a similar community that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's really hard to find view property, mm -hmm. so I'm excited about most of those lots are going to be view view lots. Um, I'm also excited to have a big yard. Mm -hmm. That's what I really want if we're going to find another house. Absolutely. Right? And then we haven't really talked about this. Uh -oh. But I really want a single story. Oh, they have single story there. Well, how do you feel about a single story? I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, that was easy. 
I don't know why that would be an issue. Okay. I mean, there's very few single stories out there, so that would be a huge selling point for the future if we ever needed to sell the home. Right. I'm always thinking long term. <laughs> so, Sorobashi says uh, CJ is worried about having to work until he's 70 to pay off the house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you guys know you bought like at the very, very uh, most oppor- time. Well, opportunistic time. Yes. For some reason, the, the house that they purchased, I had no idea why it wasn't moving. It right. was just, it's behind the gates. It's in Western. It's beautiful. But um, it just was sitting there for like 60 days. It wasn't selling. And they got such a great deal on it. And it's probably worth $350,000 more than they paid for it two oh, years ago. Oh, you guys made such a great investment. And she said, agreed. We well, love your home too. Hey, we have to have you over still for dinner because <laughs> they had us over. So I'll reach out to you so we can make that happen when things kind of cool down a little with this variant that's been going around. Crazy. So inventory, including new construction, continues to be low and sold out. What do you think about that? I think it's a trend. I think it's a trend for 2022 mm-hmm. and beyond. Again, I'm going to start harping on this. Three and a half percent, six and a half percent. We got a long ways to go mm-hmm. while the rates are going to continue to climb. And there's a lot of people that can afford these homes, mm-hmm. right? Um, I was at this meeting last week before I came to to this to our podcast, and we were in a home that we were previewing before anybody else, and it was on the market for two point nine million dollars, mm-hmm. right? So th- there's a, a select few people that can afford a two point nine right. million dollar home, right? So it, the average person would think, "Oh, this house is going to sit for a while." Oh, maybe I offer two point seven or two point eight. <sighs> it right? doesn't work that way. Not in this market. Not in this market. So. That was my last, the last house that we previewed as a, um, a group on my mm-hmm. elite group. That house sold in like two days. Wow. To somebody else in our group, mm-hmm. represented buyer, right? Gone, $2.9 million, gone, that, just like that, yeah. right? So th- that's gonna continue to happen over and over and over again. And you can't say, um, oh, I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the market to drop. You're gonna be waiting like six or seven years. That's, that's not gonna work, mm. right? So if you see the house that you want, you got to go for it. And it might take you five, 10 offers before you get the house, your house, mm-hmm. right? You got to trust the process and, and, and we got to start going now because it's going to get worse during for buyers time. during spring and then even worse in the summertime. Summer. Everybody wants to move at that time. If we have five offers per house now, what do you think it's going to be in two months? We're going to have 10, 15, 20 offers last year for like a two month period, every house had 30 offers on it. I remember that time. You know, and you're gonna be waiving everything, appraisal, this, that. Mm -hmm. So I know how to protect our buyers. We know how to protect our buyers in the contract. But if you guys wanna buy a home, you gotta get in now because it's it's gonna be going like this for three, four, five years. Until those rates catch up, Mm -hmm. people can afford it. Yeah, they can. You have a lot of people who are moving from the big cities to the suburbs who are used to paying these outrageous prices for small homes just to be close to their job. And they just, they've found these um, best kept secrets in Santa Clarita and they're just moving and buying them up so quickly. And all my people know, because I I, I traveled a couple high schools, okay, in my day. I went to North Hollywood High and then graduated from Van Nuys. And the big joke that I've been telling people for a year, 10 plus years, right? I've been telling all my friends out there, come up to Santa Clarita, you know, if you really love your family, you'll come up here because it's so I, I would just say that because it's so nice out here. Right. Yes. And it was always the best kept secret, but it's not anymore. It's not the it's cat. Not. The cat's out the bag. Everybody knows about Santa Clarita and the prices are going to continue to just climb, 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 climb until I wouldn't be surprised that we start being more expensive than the valley because it's it's nicer. Yeah. It's cleaner. It's safer. The schools are better. And guess what? You? People are, okay, oh, but it's, the Valley has better restaurants. Get (laughs) out of here with that ridiculous, oh, there's more culture out here, really? People pissing on the sidewalk? Like, (laughs) anyhow. So Santa Clarita is a place to be. Come out here before the prices continue to go up and up and up and up. Yes, yes, for sure. That's so funny that you say that because, I mean, we don't have that good of a selection of restaurants, but we do have a good mixture of culture out here. It's just a matter of time before 
people start catching on and opening up new things, right? Right. And you hit it right there. We have a great mixture of culture. So mm-hmm. even with our, our community, oh my gosh, we have culture from everywhere. What's wrong with just having dinner at people's houses? I know you can't just go to your friend's house. Can't go to your friend's it's house. It's gonna taste way better anyways than right? going out to eat. I much knows rather what they're do even that. putting in that food. And think about when there was the lockdown, you couldn't even go out to eat anyway. So who cares? Just adjust your lifestyle a little bit and start spending more time with friends and family, right? Absolutely. Come right. come up to Santa Clarita before it's too late, guys. <laughs> Before it's too late, all my people in the valley come up to Santa Clarita before it's too late. I've been telling you guys for ten years. <laughs> Chris is over here preaching. <laughs> we're, go- we're going, we're- Ravashi. You know what? We're just going to invite ourselves to your house. We'll be at your house soon next week. She said we have culture. Come on! <laughs> oh my gosh, this she can cook so well. Oh yeah, it is so delicious. Her food. Oh, she got me hooked the first time I ever met her. <laughs> You, we're going to go to your house, and anybody who's re- ready to move out here, you could just come over. We'll cook for you, too. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry Cor- about the restaurants. <laughs> Corey gets d- down in the kitchen. Yes, I do. Well, I try anyways. So with California and the COVID mandates um, that have been happening recently, we have a lot of our friends and clients who have been telling us that there's just so many mandates that are really pushing them to want to leave the state. I mean, I don't know how it is in other states, but... Is it kind of like that across the board? Because a lot of people are wanting to move away. Well, let's talk about it. So how many of you out there, because we're coming across this more frequently now, right? Mm -hmm. With our clients and our friends, um, that they got to draw their line in the sand. Mm -hmm. They decided to draw it, right? So how many of you are contemplating leaving California because of the the COVID guidelines are affecting your your workplace, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or just the way that you live, because we have, I mean, more than a handful of people that we know, love, and respect that don't want to get vaccinated, right? Mm-hmm. And if they don't get vaccinated, they're, they're getting uh, suspended and fired from their jobs. Right. And, and we're talking about corporations that they've given a lot of their blood, sweat, and tears to over the years. Right. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, it's it's very interesting because they have a lot of support you know they have their their union dues that they're paying and you would think they would have support from their unions but their unions aren't even supporting them and then we have clients who drew their line in the sand and said they weren't going to get vaccinated but finally gave in and said okay i'm going to get vaccinated they're fully vaccinated the husband caught covid over the winter break and they're not going to pay him his covid sick pay while he was out so this is a because because he didn't have his booster so and this I'm is like, a new thing. wait, what? And he didn't even know, but he's not even eligible to get the booster yet. Because you have to wait, I think, six months after you get vaccinated before you get the booster it's, or three months. I'm not sure. It's just so weird. Look, I'm fully vaccinated and I think it's everybody's choice to do it if they want. Right. But I just feel like there's there's no common ground. Every, everyone has their own rules wherever they want to go. Right. It's yes. just weird. Well, here, here's what doesn't make sense to me. Right. Because everything's contradictory. Right. So. Let's just take Kaiser Hospital Mm -hmm. for one, right? Because we have friends there. Okay, so if you work for Kaiser and you're an employee there, whether it be on the um, corporate side Mm -hmm. or whether it be on the nursing side, doctors, medical side, if you're not vaccinated, you're getting let go, Mm -hmm. right? doesn't matter if you have a a religious exemption or a medical exemption. Well, they told them they could. And then one of our clients who presented the exemption told her no and put her on suspension. Right. And they let her go. So, okay, if you're going to plant your flag there, Kaiser, and you're going to say, if you guys don't get vaccinated in order to protect our patients and blah, 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 um, we're going to have to let you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. You're a corporation. If that's where you want to plant your flag, okay. But here's the big but. What about the the, the employees that are vaccinated that get covid and are symptomatic. Symptomatic or sick. They don't feel good. They got to be back to work in five days regardless with COVID. It, that just How does that make sense. sense? It doesn't make sense. How does that make sense? Because we have a, a different friend of ours that works there that was sick. And they were. she had to come back to work before she was ready mm-hmm. with COVID. How does that make sense? You can't have one and the other. I, I don't I'm sorry. Get it. It's crazy. I think a lot of people are getting a little fed up and... It just doesn't make sense. So, well, it looks like we have some comments on here. Urvashi said, yay, come on over. And Danette said, we did. 
And Annette said it's all insane. Okay. We'll agree <laughs> that on. it's all insane and we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, well, just that, just ev- I think rant. everyone's over everybody's talking over about it. it so. Everybody's over it for sure. So high home prices don't be uh, don't appear to be affecting the sales at all. And homes are going under contract quickly, even at the higher um, prices, which is what we just talked about. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that uh, new meet, the meeting you went to today for Elite? Sure. So here's what's here's what's out there. We're talking about, so this group of elite, it's like 40-ish, 40 to 45 agents, mm-hmm. we're top producing agents in Santa Clarita Valley, right? Um, out, of, out of us 45 agents, I think there might have been four or five agents that actually had listings coming up. Wow. No inventory, right? Right. Um, and then the house that we saw, I'm going to be posting some footage on it. Um, after the show, I'll spend some time and I'll post some footage on it on our on our. Um, IG feed Mm -hmm. and share it on Facebook as well. So that particular house, 2,200 square feet, original owners in old Valencia, Mm -hmm. like old orchard area, if Mm -hmm. anybody's familiar with that, like Wiley and old orchard, Mm -hmm. that home is going to be listed at 850, 2,200 square feet. The the big plus is that it has a 10,000 square foot lot. Oh, that's, that's good. But we're talking about pretty original stuff. Like, yeah, the windows have been upgraded. It's all carpet upstairs. But somebody's going to want to go in there and they're going to want to make it their own, right? Right. So you're going to drop another 50, 60 grand, I think, when you get in there. Great location. But that's what houses are going for. 2,200 square feet, pretty original condition, 850. And that 850 is just a list price. Everybody at that meeting, we're all expecting that house to sell for 900,000. Yeah. Wow. And and that's that's what houses are going for, and that house might be gone before it even hits the market. I'm sure it will because when you told me about it, I'm like, oh, 900 probably. Well, and that's that was another thing at at the meeting, and and I've actually heard this with our clients as well. There's a lot of people out there, uh, sellers, that don't want to deal with with people coming in and out of their house, and because it's this type of market. They could sell their house without actually going live on the market. Mm-hmm. They could tell whatever real estate agent they're working with, us included, hey, you know what? I want to sell this house for $900,000, but I don't, I don't want to go on the market. Right. Can you sell it for $900,000? Mm-hmm. And the answer is yes. You can. Yes, we can do that right now. Um, they just don't want to have all those people in their house. For and, anyone who and is considering you know, selling their home, but they're deterred because they are afraid of COVID or they don't want people coming in and touching their stuff, we can absolutely do that. We can exclude it from the MLS and that's and we have huge marketing tools that we could help you with getting you, you know, top dollar for your home. So Chris, do you want to tell us about the credit tip of the week? Sure. So this is these are all simple tips, but this is not a general knowledge for everybody. Mm-hmm. So a big one is anybody that has credit cards out there, right? And you have a limit. We're gonna use a thousand dollar limit just for numbers sake to keep it simple easy Mm -hmm. so if you have a thousand dollar limit on your credit card you really shouldn't go past 20 20 to 30 percent i like to stay at 20 i like to be more conservative right Right. have a running balance more than 20 percent. so you got a thousand dollar card you shouldn't have a running balance more than 200 Mm dollars 250 would be pushing it 25 percent is pushing it but don't go above that because what happens is it's, it's, it's such a science that you go from helping your credit improve mm-hmm. with that running balance at 20% till you start going over, let's say 30%, now it's negatively hitting your, your FICO score. Right. Right. So now every month it hits it negative. And for some reason, you know, the credit card companies start to worry and they say, hey, well, they're, they're using too much credit. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they're going to be close to their limit. Yeah. And, and you got to be careful. So, People that are teetering on the lines out there, if you have a lot of open lines that are 20%, 20%, 20%, and you think you're doing good, be careful because these credit card companies, they could drop your limit. I've seen it happen before. I mean, there was time there was a time where you we were at like 50% and if they drop your limit, it can make it look like you maxed out your credit cards and then what worse can happen is some of these companies will just close your line of credit and that does not look good on your credit. It does not look good. So that's we'll give you one more tip today, right? So another <laughs> tip is is when you do pay off a card Don't do not close, close the account. Keep it open. And I know it's tough. So you wonder why 
these credit card companies can get away with charging you an annual fee of $20, mm -hmm. $25, $89. I've seen yes. fees like that. They can get away with it because if you close that account, it's going to negatively hit your, your credit. It will. It will. It, just keep it open. Pay that little fee. It's like you're buying your credit over time, right? Yep. You're, you're paying your dues, unfortunately. But, you know, unless unless you're a, a, a cash cow and you can buy everything cash, like houses and cars and, you know, things that, that you need credit for, mm -hmm. you got to play this game and you got you to learn the rules. Because if you learn the rules, then you can win at it, right? If you don't, Absolutely. you're, you're going to be in trouble. Absolutely. So for more credit tips and home buying tips or even home selling tips or anything real estate or um, lending related, be sure to reach out to us because we have a lot of resources and answers for you. Uh, we have a huge wealth of knowledge with us being in the industry for almost 20 years. Um, we'd love to help you at Silver Lending and Silver Realty. Please reach out to us. Yeah, please do. I mean, we have, we're talking about thousands of borrowers over the years and hundreds of, of, of buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen a lot in this industry. We, we don't uh, boast about it a lot, mm -hmm. but we really, really know this industry and we could really help you out and just use us as a tool. If anybody knows us out there, you know, we're not pushy. Mm -hmm. So you have nothing to worry about when you call us. We truly have your best interest at heart. We want to help you. So call us, take advantage of our time. You're not bothering us because I always get that. Yeah, I always get that too. I hope I'm not bothering you. I'm like, you're never bothering me. Just hearing from anybody really brightens my it. day. We love it. We, we love, love it. helping people and we absolutely love what we do. We're the owners of Silver Realty and Silva Lending and we take pride in what we do. So please reach out to us. We'd love to help. So do we have anything exciting coming up this week? What do we have exciting coming up this week? You know, I'm excited about simple stuff, golf, this, family. Family dinners are always my family favorite Family dinners of the week. are the best. Are the best. Yes, for sure. I can't wait for that every Saturday. Do we have anything on? I know I never, I know you always say, look at the calendar. Look, look at the calendar. At the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> do we have anything exciting coming up this week? Uh, I'm living. <laughs> All right, good, good. What about next week? Uh, what? I'm just trying to make it day by day. <laughs> You put me on the spot. I don't That's, even know. Well, next next week, I know you set up that walkthrough at, at uh, Williams yes. Ranch. I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that's going to be after next week's show. So we won't be able to talk about it next week. Yes. But the following week, we'll have a, a lot more knowledge. What I can tell you about that place is I heard that they're pushing out the sales, the pre-sales. Uh -huh. It was supposed to be this month, but our little birdie told me it's not going to be till March. Oh, okay. So we'll be way ahead of the game. I'm we'll be way ahead of the game. That. Yeah. Do you have anything exciting other than golf, jujitsu? I got jujitsu with the kids, and then I get to see my friend Monica there. She, she makes these wonderful cups. We love them. Um, trying to think. Oh, I don't think we have anything else other than our shopping trip with Nola. Oh, so Danette is right on point. She said, "When's the next Disney oh, trip?" Oh, the next Disney trip. That's in February. So the thirteenth. We already did our two trips for the month. And the second trip, we had two days. So Wait, did you say February. February 13th? Yes. So what day does that fall on? A Sunday. Valentine's Day. So I, I'm safe, right? I don't have to do a Valentine's Day gift? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> you know what? You do you. We'll just see what happens with that. I guess that's our Valentine's Day present to each other. We're going to Disneyland. I do the planning. It's my trip. It's my uh, Valentine's Day gift to myself. How about that? I'll get you, uh, I'll get you some cotton candy, girl. <laughs> I hate cotton candy. It's disgusting. <laughs> No, in all honestly, honesty, I always tell Chris, please don't buy me flowers on Valentine's Day. I used to work at a flower shop in um, high school, and they mark up the prices so high for roses and any other flower, any imported flower. And I'm kind of bougie when it comes to flowers because I know my flowers. I'm like, do not give me carnations. I don't want no mums. I need some hydrangeas, some peonies. Give me some good stuff that smells delicious. And I'm like, do not buy it on Valentine's Day tip to anybody who's planning on buying flowers for their significant other wait for like two weeks after valentine's day yeah so just so guys <laughs> if you're but married get, or you have a girlfriend just tell her you got covid for two weeks hey easy buddy <laughs> so no. you can get so you can get the discount on the chocolate and the, and the flower and the flowers is that what I, you're saying no that's not what i'm saying <laughs> Just give give your significant other the heads up that look we're going to spend we're going to save some money, and I'm going to get you a really nice bouquet after, and we'll get a, a nice dinner thrown in too instead of spending all this money just on the flowers that are going to die in three days. 
I love that. I love that you think this way. <laughs> I love that you think this way. So did you take notes? Because I am going to expect some flowers on the 20th. Yeah, I'm going to put it in my calendar. As soon as I get my phone back after this show, I'm putting it in the calendar two weeks after. I think this month only goes to the 28th. February goes to the 28th this year. Yes. So put it to the 28th. <laughs> Too much, too Flower much. Flower time. Oh, and they have good deals at Costco on roses if anybody wants roses. But I'll start planning for it now. So now I got to think about something special because this woman does deserve everything and more. You oh, do. thank you. You're my everything. So I'll, I'll think about it for Valentine's Day. It's coming. Then we got our, so we got Valentine's Day in February. Then March, we have like our dating anniversary, right? Mm -hmm. And then right after that, May is our wedding anniversary. Yeah. It's coming up all around the corner. If anybody has some really cool ideas for uh, Valentine's Day, hit Chris up and let him know. I like surprises. It doesn't come at, come at me with some ridiculous stuff like, <laughs> oh, you uh, you get this private jet and fly. No, we can't do all that. We got kids. <laughs> I got We got to be in bed by 10 o'clock. Not so. unless you know somebody who has a <laughs> private jet and can hook them up because I'm not trying to spend all kinds of money on something like that. Hook him up. We'll get grandma to wash the kids, and then we could go wine tasting or something up north. Ooh, I like wine tasting. That's that's a good time. Every yes. Time. Okay. Well. Oh, Danette, she's on it. I just sent Chris a link. Wow, Danette. <laughs> Thank you, Danette. Thank you so she's much. Got, she's got your back. We gotta do a we gotta do a, a a double date with with Danette and her dude. Yep. We'll have to plan it. Gonna have to plan it out. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, so much for joining us on our show here on R&R &R Relationships and Real Estate. It's been so fun interacting with all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. It's, it's always a good time. It's a quick hour. We love to see you guys and conversate with you guys. Danette, Urvashi, uh, Betsy, can't think of everybody else. Uh, Janice, thank you guys so much Raph for- too. Raph, thank you so much mm -hmm. for interacting with us today. It makes the show so much more fun. Oh, my mom just popped on. Hi, honeys. The flowers you got me a few weeks ago lasted 10 days. Costco, baby. That's what this is. What's this about a trip? <laughs> this is about a trip. Oh, we were just saying for Valentine's Day, Chris can take me somewhere and surprise me. So all the trips run through through Mama, Bunny Miklovich. Yes. Always got to run them through her because she watches our babies. Yeah, my mom's the best. Her and my dad watch the kids for us when we go anywhere. So what my mom just mentioned is I got her some flowers just because because everybody loves to get flowers, I, I think. And so I got her these beautiful two dozen yellow roses from Costco. And it's such a great deal. And I'm happy that they lasted 10 days for you, mom. And then, and thank you to Professor Lekka. She, she made it too. So she, she was uh, with us. Really appreciate you guys. You guys make the show so much fun for us. Uh, again, thank you for hanging out with us and try to catch us every single Wednesday here on Facebook live at 12 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.